automatic say jam slam coach the yeah. boomer, the 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 strongest lab now has a team of four under your uh under your tutelage uh, how first of all before we even get into anything how has like this uh how has everything been going as far as like coaching everybody and getting prepared for this event Fantastic. My credit score has gone up. I've been losing weight. I've been going to the gym and eating clean. I'm highly, highly motivated and blessed and <laughs> doing spiritually great. No, it's been awesome, man. Like, I'm so happy. This is like my favorite thing I've done with Street Fighter 6 so far, like straight up. Uh, I've been working hard and I've been prioritizing my own training and just because I'm only one person. There are four people. Mm -hmm. And my I had to clutch and maybe win sometimes. But if... Uh, if I can't get the team ready, then it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. the, the way the rules are at the second round robin, if we just lose three, it doesn't even get to the anchor. So I'm just out of the question. So those first two players are the most most important. The uh, I think Serotina is like iron maybe three or four around now. Mm -hmm. Cat, she got to gold five, and there is a there is a cinematic experience. If I told you how she's grown, like, it's awesome. I'm gonna try to cut that up at some point. Um, but I'm gonna save it for I'm gonna save it for Nash's. I'll wait till the event's over. <laughs> yeah. But she's been doing fantastic. But my other two players are very they're they're good. I'm not underestimating nobody, but they need the least help. So I'm gonna then then the other two players need the most help. So they're they're the priority. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I we were just talking before we recorded the interview that I just wound up playing your your boy All Sham No Wow. Uh, <laughs> that was crazy. I tuned in. I'm like, who's this? Who's this Ryu player just sitting there and looking? Ain't nobody. Ain't no Ryu looking around. <laughs> no jumping, no forward heavy punts, no donkey kick. But yeah, he's been yeah he's been doing good. Yeah, no, it, it, I I feel like that was the most honest fight I've ever had in Street Fighter Six in general. <laughs> and I, I'm I'm happy to tell you, you know how Sage M Slam these kinds of events with new players, the the I guess the default strategy is to find out the most degenerate thing, pick Honda, modern, mm -hmm. do the di. All my teammates are boomers. Like, the most. The most rabid player is Roy, and he's tame for a Jamie player. Like they are uppercutting. I didn't. It wasn't my fault either. I, you know, I'm down for whatever. I'll teach you. You know, I'll teach you the answer for it. I'll teach you how to like play footsies. But they just, they just all play solid fireball uppercut game. <laughs> so I'm like yeah, right hell at home. Yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. So the true boomer maneuvers are are coming to say Jam Slam then. Yeah, I don't know how it happened. I'm cool with it though. <laughs> So uh, I wanted to I wanted to touch on a couple of things because you know uh, we we you and I have talked about this before where like there's definitely like a difference between like when you're playing the game and when you're like trying to teach somebody the game um, and I specific I, I specifically remember you mentioning that like one of your favorite things is when you see like the light bulb go off in somebody's head right um, ha have you had those moments already yes <laughs> all of them all players have myself included too like i made a tweet about the, the system mechanics of street fighter 6 and now i've had a somewhat of a change of heart in understanding the design and having a, a different amount of respect for the game design when you observe new players this much mm -hmm. you're like wow that's kind of clever how you do this combo but when you drop it you're still safe but the player doesn't know that they're they're frustrated because they didn't get the combo they want but mm -hmm. they did something else but they didn't get punished for it but they don't even like, but the game's design makes it so you're okay. Yeah, and, you know, we've commiserated, I think, a little bit on how we, we felt about the game in the past uh, to the point where some people have compl complained that all we do is complain about Street Fighter VI. Um, yeah, yeah. You, you mentioned you feel a little bit differently about uh, how the game is designed. Like, um, are there any, like, specific things that you can share with us uh, that you've changed your mind on? So my first two players, the, the like, Iron Rank and the Gold-ish Rank, uh, one's playing modern, the other one's playing classical, and you can see the difference. Especially, but they're they're both coming from like the Tekken Slam, mm. Sage Jam Slam, so they're they're used to calling things back to and holding back to block. I guess they're not holding; they're not used to holding down back rather, mm. and because they're like, oh, what, what if a mid hits me? So, so they they have all these these uh, physical brain to brain to fingers hurdle that that are already in the way, so they can't even get to the what might be the fun part. Uh, gotcha. So Cat, easy, because she's playing modern. So she can fireball an uppercut all day. It's actually amazing. She's like waiting for the upper. She's waiting for the jump. They didn't jump, fireball. And then she start, I'm starting to get her in the mid range and play footsies. Uh, but the other thing is, it's just so much unknown. You don't know why things are happening. Why is Guile doing a flash kick when, uh, when he gets knocked on the ground? Why is he hitting buttons? How come I can't hit him when he's getting... It's like all these things you don't know. 
But if, if nobody's there to help you and show you what it is, it's just you're going to quit. You're not, you're, this game sucks. <laughs> I'm not going to play it. Yeah. Um, so how do you approach this game as a coach as opposed to a player? Like, are you looking for, like, super ultra-specific things that you wouldn't be paying attention to? Were you uh, just playing on your own? Uh, you just, I just play it by ear for the most part. I mean, I, I know enough, but you can't, like, this is plus three, and therefore if you're in three, you can throw. You can't, you gotta, like, look at what they're doing. And the, somewhat thankfully, they're all playing in a patient way. Mm -hmm. So that gives you, that, that leads to observation skills, and that leads to countering what your opponent's doing. The problem with that style, even though it has more longevity and it's more foundationally better, the problem with that style is you don't know what you're looking at. So just things can happen, and you have to learn in the moment. Rather than if you're the aggressive type, the 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 typical like Honda matter, Honda, Honda modern who's doing headbutts and just going forward and skipping and just you know forcing your way in, playing a one-player game, you're not going to have those observational skills and you're going to learn less and that's like not as healthy. Fortunately, as you may know, you can kind of play like that at high level anyways and get away with it. <laughs> You've got to learn a little bit more. So both both play styles are pretty valid. Have you? But as far as oh, go ahead, sorry. As sorry. far as like my coach is just using what they're already doing and enhancing what they're good at. That's the main key. And then I think what sets me apart from other coaches is I'm not just well, I don't know. I'm not trying to. I hope it doesn't sound like I'm throwing shade at all, but I have. I have a lot of experience with talking to people and understanding. And it's not just about the game. It's about understanding where they're at as a person. Because I'm not sure if other people could coach some of the players that I have. Because there may be some other barriers that they got to talk through to even get to the game. And that's a really important aspect to it. I mean, a really important... I mean, it applies to everyone, including myself. I've, I've been preaching to my players. You know, try to take your frustration out of the game because it's just going to prevent... Your growth it's just going to be something that delays you you know actually giving your opponent credit so you understand it don't be frustrated and then i was playing casuals with him anon i was like man this character i was guessing right every time this guy is so stupid this game but i mean we're all guilty of it but it's still true the better you you know approach that situation the, the clearer your head is the better you're going to come up with a solution in the moment gotcha um have you gotten a chance to peep at uh, some of the other teams and see what other teams are up to and how they're training no elon i wouldn't dare spy on my opponents why would i do such a thing it's not spying it's reconnaissance <laughs> of course i have i've been checking out all the streams and taking notes and downloading and looking at what they're doing and preparing my players for it like a good coach got dang wood good if you're down to share like what is like the one thing you're expecting uh that your players are going to run into that you're worried about uh no nah, i don't really have anything in particular because I've built such a strong foundation that they can play solid and be fine. Uh, so with, with that in mind, I think the most concerning thing, it's not really that big, it's not that big, but it's just staying in the moment, not being frustrated. And the nerves, the nerves are going to mm -hmm. make you plus or minus two ranks, I think. Some people, so let me tell you something. All right, keep it on the low. Cat has beaten diamond players in casual matches. He's beaten, she's taken matches off of diamond players. She was silver a few days ago. She was silver like two. Damn. she's taking some matches off diamond players but she might be a nervous wreck mm -hmm. so, but her opponents might be a nervous wreck too like scara is in platinum now cat's still in gold one gold two ish so that's like a gold versus a platinum scara is a very experienced he's like a veteran competitive player and he has a he has a really problem solving mind so his nerves i don't think it's going to take him down much so mm -hmm. we'll see how that goes See how that goes, because yeah, your nerves might make you plus or minus a few ranks. Yeah, no, uh, and it's funny you mentioned Skara, because I put Skara up on stage when I was working Evo for him to play Tekken, mm -hmm. and honestly, like him playing was one of my favorite matches, because like he, you, you could tell like his experience in high pressure situations in gaming, because like he lost his first, uh, the first game like decisively, but like slowly but surely, like he just started building it back up and like was able to bring it back. So sick. Dude, uh, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, is with an event like this, where you have some people who have been like you know lifelong fighting game players, and some people who are just getting introduced to it, um, are you finding uh, any difficulty with like trying to get everybody on the same level? I know you said like you're just kind of meeting people where they're at and just getting them to take the next step up from there, which is what teaching is about. 
Um, but are you at all worried with like the difference of skill when you have somebody like I don't know FDX on one of the other teams? Oh. It's so specific that the the skill levels are not exactly calibrated equally. It's the player strength sometimes. So for example, I'm a I'm a little bit blessed. I kind of played the game a little bit. I basically have two anchors on my team, mm -hmm. but Roy was in diamond. I coached him up to master. Well, honestly, I coached him a little. I coached him enough, and he's been he's been grinding like a crazy person. Yeah. Now he, now I have two master rank, and in my opinion, Bald Icon was one of the better anchor players. So I have probably one of the better anchor players and another anchor player. The two players on the the bottom part, they are a little bit further behind than the people that they're gonna play against. Like Sero is still in iron. She's she's just now starting to get it. I can see her mind is in gold, even platinum. But her her ability to perform it with her with her hands it's not there yet because that's mm -hmm. that's that, that's the whole modern versus classical thing. If she was playing modern, she might be better off. But I'm not here to force force my will upon people. Please. Yeah. So the 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 those those tiers those those match tiers are not exactly equal. Uh, did that answer your question? Because I forgot. Yeah. What it was. No. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. And you know you're you're obviously no stranger to events like this. You've done uh. A similar event in the past with um i think it was with majin obama where you wor worked yeah, yeah, with yeah. like uh emaru and lakari um <laughs> so uh do you think since you have had an experience of something like this before that that is going to help set your team up for success more so than the others no no i thought that's always been there the, the prior the event Previous to that, I've already had the experience as well. Like, I was a professional coach for a little bit for Street mm -hmm. Fighter V. I don't know how much that really means, but <laughs> this is something I've done for many years as far as, like, streaming and teaching people how to do stuff and uh, creating a community of like-minded people just to have fun. That's really the uh, – there's nothing else. I don't – like, winning and losing is cool. It's not, I'm not saying it's not a priority and it's not the goal, but I think – Playing the game in a way that you're satisfied with and hopefully enjoying it that is like my number one priority and helping like helping them get to that part it's kind of funny because it seems like a lot of the people aren't enjoying street fighter as much as they were tech <laughs> <laughs> um and uh just one final thing this is obviously going to get a lot of new people introduced to street fighter 6 much like it did for tekken hmm. um what kind of advice do you have for somebody who is, you know, watches this, sees their favorite streamer who doesn't usually play fighting games playing this uh, and wants to try picking it up? Do you have any, like, advice? Picking it up? Uh, look for what's fun. You got to understand the rules of the game and then lead that into what you think is fun. Hopefully that lines up. Gotcha. Uh, and uh, any any predictions? Do you have any predictions on, like, who who are some of the top teams, who are some of the bottom teams? Or is it still too early to tell? Uh, I wanted, I wanted to actually, if I may, go back to that oh, previous yeah. question. Go there ahead. are two things that help tremendously with Cat and Cero when you're in the iron ranks. You, taking the throw is broken in iron ranks because it does the least amount of damage, and they don't know how to they don't know how to follow up with it. Your opponents, if they throw you, it's even because it, taking the throw is a good thing to do in the highest level too, because it's like the least threatening thing. And your your follow up after the throw is typically not that strong. It's not the best knockdown uh, unless you're in the corner. So if you take the throw and you just learn how to anti air and learn, it's those, it's those three things. Take the throw. Don't be upset when you're getting beat up by things you don't understand. So you take the throw. You learn how to react to drive impact, and then you learn how to anti air. That will get you to gold rank. I promise you, mm. easily. <laughs> those three things. And then you got to start learning matchups, and then you'll start experiencing people who are adjusting to your gameplay a little bit. And uh, yeah, that'll, that'll help quite a bit. Gotcha. As far as like the teams, predictions for teams, man, that's a tough one. Uh, it really is hard to tell. It really is hard to tell. I, Nephew has a maybe a player edge, like him as a player. Uh, as far as his coaching, he's probably going to be like above average, but I think best coaches are going to be like man me diaphone shine brian f is a great coach but his availability is not as good mm -hmm. and, uh, I might be missing. i'm forgetting somebody unfortunately uh, i i have the list here one second uh nephew shine jb is the last one yeah, jb J, jb is very strong as a coach as well it's pretty funny because he worked with 
people on my team, and he taught them some good stuff. So <laughs> before before coaches were decided, JB <laughs> helped out some of my teammates tremendously. But they chose me. A lot of the oh, people yeah. on my team, they, they, there's like a form we could fill out to like make a suggestion. I want this person on my team. So, and that's kind of how I kind of played the game a little bit because mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'm just a lowly 1800 Jamie player. I should have a really strong anchor. <laughs> Thing. <laughs> and uh and it worked out and i also made a read that one of my players would choose me so i could choose two other players so then we can all kind of form voltron and it worked out perfectly hell yeah um actually i i have one final uh one follow-up question to that uh since you were talking about like you know uh being a top level player does not mean you're going to be a top level coach right those are two different skill sets sure. so what is your advice for somebody who wants to get into coaching or somebody who is a coach and wants to get better? Like, what are some ways that you can improve as a coach? Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's just like the fighting game when you're taking notes and you're in training mode, you're figuring out what works and what doesn't. The same thing is true for talking to a person. I mean, there is a egregious, aggressive backseating problem in Twitch chat when these uh, people in the Sage M Slam, the new players, their viewers are pissing them off, giving them advice, and they're giving them good advice but terrible advice for them it's not the right diagnosis for what their problem is like uh the people were trying to tell okay so sarah tina she was looking at broski's video for aki and i'm not gonna stop her i'm not gonna tell her don't do that but it's not gonna help her that much (laughs) it's a good habit to look at what pro players are doing and start to digest that information maybe even just take a break from what you're doing but it's not it's not her problem (laughs) it's like that's like mid to high level stuff and which I think she can digest it, but she can't do it yet. So what the focus is on is being able to just start with the doing a quarter circle forward and doing a quarter circle back because she can do it on one side, not the other. <laughs> so Understanding that and putting it t- together and then designing drills that are tailored for your players. That's what I've been doing for like, I've been, I've been like, what I did for cat was I was playing like DJ and like Jamie or whatever. And I was just, I was doing like a pro nut, would do in ranked and just block and just take the throw sometimes i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a di and then just look for that and then and then i'd start to i wouldn't tell her but i would start jumping and she would naturally start anti-airing and then i would i would without explaining it i would show her how to react to di while while looking for the anti-air and now i'd be like okay i want you to start hitting down modern down medium while i'm doing all this and see how it fits in so it's just a little just little like bit by bit but when you're telling them, here's the max damage combo after DI, it's nearly a waste of time. It's nearly a waste of time. Yeah, no, and if it makes you feel any here's better... A good damage combo after DI. <laughs> here's a decent damage you can do. Just something that you don't drop. And then start to add to it until it gets to that place. Yeah, no, and if it makes you feel any better, as far as the backseating goes, like, I remember during the pandemic watching Charles Leclerc, who is a Formula One driver, playing formula one game streaming on twitch and people telling him like how much fuel he needed for his car or whatever so (laughs) so that unfortunately just happens and it sucks uh but um that's a really that's a really good point of like uh trying to have the players find their own answers to problems um yep so that's that's something i'm gonna take with me for whenever uh also looking at their history as a gamer so cats but it doesn't always line up uh but the cat is a speed runner so she's used to like like doing hikes dude her reactions we did benchmark her reactions are almost 10 frames like mine oh shit <laughs> she's doing modern uppercut and it's too fast like it's only hitting one time so she's not getting she's getting a nerfed modern uppercut and so i'm mm. like cat you gotta wait for the uppercut a little bit so you can hit it twice and it's gonna help you react to other stuff too because you can spend more time looking you know so like her reactions are out of control and uh yeah yeah nice i can't wait to see it um any uh when when does everything start? Is it next week or is it has it started already? Tomorrow is the first round robin. Okay, and that is going to be at Sagejam's channel, twitch.tv for slash Yep. Okay. Uh, tomorrow, September sixth and eighth, and then TwitchCon is the twenty first. 